Welcome. This is part of a series brought to you by Savory, detailing American artists in the local communities. You're about to hear American leather craftsman Frank O'Donnell share his story and the history of the leather manufacturing industry on the North Shore of Boston. Challenged by the difficult realities of offshore competition and vanishing skilled labor, Frank holds his business together to serve our community. This story is a fascinating mixture of survival, optimism, and community support. Been doing this since my father was in the uh, leather business making slippers for some major companies. And I used to work part time after school. And I did that until I went in the service. And when I got out, I was working with my father and his health sort of failed. And I started uh, running the factory myself. The original was a eight-story building in Lynn, near the square of Lynn, and it was uh, mainly full of uh, shoe manufacturers, slipper manufacturers. And at one time, Lynn employed about 6,000 shoe workers. And today, if we have five, we have a lot. So the business has gone down mainly due to imports and uh, mainly the government doesn't really care because it's not a large viable type business. It's labor intensive and it's cheaper to send stuff overseas. Well even in Lynn you had four or five tanneries uh, making anything from side leather to kid skin, uh, glove leathers. You had two or three people making wallets, which uh, none are made in this country anymore. And you had uh, handbag people, you know, a wide variety of leather working uh, people, but mainly shoes and slippers was the uh, main focus in the land. Frank, what would you say is the biggest difference between mass-produced leather goods and handcrafted leather goods? Well, it's the quality. You, you have a better control over uh, the items you're making. And you, you, know, you don't get the large volume orders because your quality is better and it takes longer and they're more expensive than the mass market. Uh, but overall, you're better off with a good piece of handmade leather or shoes they'll outlast a lot of the imports that are coming in today. So you, nothing goes to waste? And, and no, we're, we're like Swift and Peabody. They used to get everything out of the pig but the, the wiggle of the tail. <laughs> so we, we throw nothing really away until it is scrap. Um, once we're through with the small items, keychains and stuff, we cut heel pads out of the rougher leather. And What's left is, uh, you know, pretty, pretty stringy and not usable for anything. So you are naturally a green company. What, what yeah. people are calling a green company? Yeah, we're uh, with the leather, and we've got an into making burlap bags out of uh, coffee bean bags, and, and we try to recycle everything. And the business is in land. A lot of business has been decimated by the imports. At one time, we had 6,000 leather workers in the land, and now we might have four or five, including old timers like me. So the business, uh, it's uh, very tough to keep going anymore. Cutting machines, uh, the work goes here, which will split the leather down to various thicknesses. And from there we go to the uh, cement folding machine and your skiving machine. And then there's various sewing machines set for different operations or the same, same type of operation. And all the way down are different machines that are set at one time we had 
six, seven people, you know, working on the machines. And Freddie is now the number one guy. And that's pretty much it. From there, the work is finished. It goes over here to have your straps or handles put on. And then over to the other room. Uh, so when the goods are finished from the putting the handles on, they're sent over here and hopefully have some orders that we can ship out to. And that's pretty much it. It's a fairly simple type operation, as I said, cutting and stitching. Great. Well, thank you very much, Frank. Well, thank you. Thank you for all the high quality leather goods for Savory. Well, well good. I'm glad you're using them. Need more customers like you? By now, you've probably noticed that many of these machines are sitting idle. Frank is currently providing space to a local homeless shelter to help create opportunities for training, internships, jobs, and above all, dignity. Many of the current guests of the shelter already have extensive experience in stitching and upholstery, but lost their jobs due to the economy. Other guests do not yet have skills, but are very eager to learn. Fred Smith is shown with trainers from his new workshop, who will be dedicated to harnessing the potential of our local resources. Fred has been supporting and empowering individuals who are homeless for over 15 years. To empower the folks that we work with. Perhaps buy their own machine, make these bags themselves. And so in my, my office door is always open. And people just scream into my office all day, literally. And they say, Fred, all I want is a chance to do something at the minimum to keep themselves busy so they're not walking the streets all day, but obviously to supplement their modest income if they have any income at all. So I can't tell you how many people are just dying for the opportunity to be productive. Fred Smith informs Frank that several individuals who are currently at the shelter have experience in drafting designs and making prototypes. Diverse individuals will be working together to develop these products. Pat Gorham of Savory is shown demonstrating some of the products of varying difficulty for the various skill levels of the employees of the workshop. Eventually, the workshop will offer subcontracting for businesses in addition to Savory. Well, I, I have three different products, three different stages of difficulty. This is the easiest, which is just putting sewing recycled pockets on. So I think that's perfect for someone who's just learning. Made in USA. So everything is made in USA, and your employees would just be adding a, a recycled pocket. This is a bamboo. Bamboo. This is a bamboo cover up, a beach cover up. But where do you get the root of bamboo? It's made from bamboo. It's made from bamboo. Made from bamboo. It's organic. This is the third level of difficulty. We're finishing off the pattern. Let's get these machines whirling again. America's biggest strength is its people. When we work together, America is strong. I'm bound to be discovered. Well, Frank is bound to be discovered. We hope you discover all of the wonderful resources in your local community. And thank you for watching this part of a series brought to you by Savory Detailing American Artists in the Local Community.